There's this one particular harbor So far but yet so near Where I see the days they fade away Finally disappear But then I think about the good times this later because that's, okay. that's for you to see okay. but um so we did a podcast so you've already been on it you are uh, even more well known now because of it you know that oh yeah they use your voice on other podcasts and i told you that i sent them sent you links and i'm like so you know so, so they're taking your story that you told on my podcast and they're they're using it as duplication, which is fine. I'm not making a big deal because it's more exposure for the cause. What's the right. cause? Get justice for these people. And now, you're how, a survivor. How, how do you propose the justice? Just by uh, uh, exposing what he did and Absolutely. trying to prove it in some kind of way? Have you been able to prove it? Problem is, I can't get law enforcement to open up a uh, no, 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 That's not the question. <clears throat> So, I mean, all of this is bringing attention to it, but is it actually doing anything? Is it? Is it actually... It, it, my gut feeling is, is he's dead. No. He's still alive? Yeah. That's your luck to find that bastard. Yeah. I mean, everybody asks me all the time, you know, aren't you afraid? I said, why? He shot me. I didn't do anything to him. No. You know? Uh, he was always afraid of that he was going to get murdered. That's why he had laser lights in his house and... Uh, in Roswell, down the hallway to where he sleeps at night in the master bedroom. Yeah. He had laser lights. Cause, well, he needs it. You know? Yeah. But, um, no, um, to solve the mystery is to just expose it and hope that law enforcement will get embarrassed enough to get up and do something about it because he's still a wanted man. He's still well, wanted for parole and he's a person of interest. Well, why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you spend a little more effort instead of all of this kind of stuff? Why, why wouldn't you spend a little more effort pursuing law enforcement and federal agencies? And, I have. I've already done it. Really? Not at all. And, and they're just, they just Florida don't want... Florida and Georgia. They just don't want to no. have anything to do the with it. The problem that law enforcement has is they don't have a crime scene, number one. Right. And they don't know where she disappeared from. Absolutely. Right. We suspect it was Key West. But well, well, the bottom it, line, and, and that's kind of my point, yeah. is, you know, he was pretty freaking clever, and I doubt seriously he'll you'll ever be able to prove that he did anything, and only by speculation, which breaks my heart, well, other me, than what he did to me. <laughs> but let me tell you, he's he's got already outstanding parole violation and tax invasion. If we got him back to America, the likelihood of because of his age, he would spend ain't time no in prison. Ain't no way in hell. Never know where. He's I going. don't know. I got to tell you though, he thinks he's smarter than everybody else, and I can guarantee you, he thinks he can come back here, do whatever he's got to do, and leave again. I can almost guarantee it. Absolutely not. Don't you don't think it. so? No. You don't think he would? U.S. Marshals is on this. They've been on this for years. I've, I've met and spoke with them. They, so you don't think he, he's... Uh, uh, we got the death penalty in Florida. The last place in the world he wants to be is in the state of Florida, where he committed crimes, okay? Two right, but, but none of the crimes that hold the death penalty can be proven. Well, I agree. And if, they, and if there was any, any... And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. And if there were any other than... Uh, uh, him fleeing parole, you know, it's the only thing that, that they could get him on. But uh, you well, know, they have he, a lot of evidence against him for calling him in. They do. Yeah. Then They're why don't why don't it. it's an open investigation? No, no detective's going to unfold their case in front of anybody. But but why don't why don't why don't they they uh, in, indict him? Well, Fort That's Lauderdale. Well, because, uh, well, I can answer that because I met with the U.S. Marshals. They've been trying to negotiate with the Thai government. Thai government will not release him unless he's formally charged for murder. And it's like the James Sullivan case. They found James Sullivan on a beach because of America's Most Wanted. That was re-aired. He, he, was, he fled. He hired a hitman, killed his wife in Atlanta. He was seen in Costa Rica. They had a tail on him. After the show was repetitively put out on America's Most Wanted, they found him on, on a Thai beach, okay? So now they went after him there, and they officially charged him with murder because they got the hitman. He ratted him out. All it takes is one person 
to admit that he got rid of Colleen Wood or he got rid of Chalice Paul. And I've had detectives tell me that, that that's golden. And, and I thought the person that could do it would be John Paul Jr. because he was the closest to right. his, his father during that era in time. So and he would so, never talk. So if somebody, so uh, I, I'm not quite sure if I understand. So if uh, somebody is indicted for murder, they won't extradite him? Or if they're not. If they're indicted, they'll extradite him. If they do yeah. indict they him, they will not extradite him because they, they don't believe in the death penalty or something like that. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. The uh, Thai, Thai government would have to make a deal with the or America, America have to make a deal with Thai that if they brought him back, he said he's spending the rest of his life as a prisoner. Well, well you know, he's how 86 now? 74. 84. 84? I mean, come on. A five-year sentence is death. You know, uh, so I would love I don't, to I just have a face-to-face -face with him if they brought him back. And I don't know if you could, you know, Joe, you being in law enforcement, I don't know if, if can she climb the ladder and, and go above them people down there to, to try to, like, maybe go to the state or maybe to even the governor or the attorney general of Florida and say, look, and present your evidence and, and what you have and say, you know, we just want justice. We know where he's at, and uh, uh, we're not looking <clears throat> for the death penalty. Give him five years. Okay. He's 84 years old. <laughs> U.S. Marshals was trying to work with the state attorney, and the problem is it's money. It had to cost like 40000 they thought, for to extradite him back. The state didn't want to spend the money. I paid for it. I'll pay $40,000 extra down the back. Boom. Got that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I serious. Go. And I know who his parole officer And I want to be on the plane when it lands. Me too. And I'm sure Carlene's son would want to be there as well. I'm sure. Uh, representing his mother, and I'd be there representing Chalice, because I can't find anybody else who's normal and not a criminal in Chalice's family who's going to be honest and forthright and upfront with the truth of the past about her. That's very frustrating for me because I'm the only one who spent my time, money, energy, and love to do what I've done up to this today. And I haven't made a dime off of this. No, so, no I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I dead, want justice. I, I'm dead serious. I, I, I would donate $40,000 for his return. Well, let's talk to Fort Lauderdale, see if we can make it happen. You know who else who's retired now, who was the lead investigator, was Mark Shotwell. He would be a good person to contact. He was on the Colleen Wood case. Yeah, he was on the call with another guy, but I never spoke to the other guy. <coughs> Mark didn't like me because I was too tenacious. But like I said, I'd, I'd want to have some stipulations that I'm, I'm there when they take him off the plane. I want to look him in the eye. Yeah. Uh, but what I, about their, it would be tough though. I checked out. <laughs> I checked out Thai. You know, there there's pri great private investigative companies in Thailand that are reach far beyond American private investigative and protective agencies over there. I've got one. I have the uh, video I found on on the internet that if you had somebody on the inside, you could grab them, and bring them back. Um, you know, who would end up putting them on a boat, bringing them back. Well, I, like I said, I when I, that's how I met on you. on a plane and bring them into the country that way. You'd have to come in by water. And, you that's know. how I met you. Pardon me? That's how I met you. Yeah, because you, you heard. I heard there was a $2 million reward, and I was going to buy a sailboat and sail to Thailand and walk up behind him and stick a gun in his back and say, now it's your turn, motherfucker. And that would... Wow. I, I would love that. <laughs> I had a lot of followers on my secret page. I have a secret page that only certain people have access to. But I have somebody from Australia who travels because Australians go to Thailand, especially Phuket, to for vacation. And he ID'd him at uh, a dive shop because he opened up a dive shop. Isn't that funny? He takes people out on dive boats, and that's where he dumps the bodies in the bottom of the ocean. You know. So I think he, he married a Thai woman and he started a new life down there. She's Muslim descent and he's in a little pocket area where uh, allegedly he can't be extradited, but anybody can be extradited. They extradited James Sullivan. Okay. 
I'm sure they could do it. I'm sure the U.S. Marshals, if they had an offer like you're offering, maybe they would act on it and they, they'd, uh, you know, I find I, I just really find that extremely system. hard to believe that that the federal government they has enough char charges to arrest this guy, and they saying we we can't afford to go get him. That's bullshit. what they told me right that's there bullshit. in my in my office. And uh, that, that's, that's still changed, bullshit. I can't changed I, his face. He got prostate surgery. I mean, you're in law enforcement, Joe. Do you do you believe that? That what they said? That they're I, not going to extradite him on the charges that they have. Um, and the only charge they, they have would, on they him would. is violation of uh, but violation they would. That's of That's the forty uh, grand for, for the charges he has. They, if somebody else flipped the bill on it and worked the deal out to the state, no, I think no, they no, would no, go no, for no, it. No, that's not my point. My point is, is I, I I can't imagine the state or the federal government having evidence or a way to prosecute or could prosecute somebody and not doing it because of forty thousand dollars really that's what the state attorney in Broward county said right I, and that's where his charges would lie if he was connected if they could connect if they could connect the calling would case well they him. screwed up those detectives screwed up when they went to isla morada to go question him how would they not know he was on parole because federal and state don't have the same records no they do they it. just didn't run a check on they did not. They they couldn't they, have they, missed. They were sloppy. They were they were sloppy. Yeah. Well, Shotwell, he claims that you know that case was on his desk till the day he he retired, and it always bothered him. But he was upset when he heard I went to the FBI in, in Georgia, and I was trying you know because he said we can't combine the cases even though we know it's the same suspect and Chalice is just circumstantial to Collingwood, which is fine. They got him for Colleen Wood, I'd be happy. But, you know, there's other men that are missing. And nobody's investigating that either. I would be happy if they got him on parole violation. Me too. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. The man's 84 years old. Yeah. Five years, he's done. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it, 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 I, I mean, and that's the other thing, too. The U.S. Martin, I can't believe Why wouldn't you pursue the U.S. Marshals and say... They tried to extradite him from England. They asked me if I had anything to do with it. They said they missed him by one day. Well, and well, I have well, nothing well, to do but, with but, it. But from everything that you just told me about Thailand, mm -hmm. they won't do it if they're going to execute him. But if anything else, they would extradite him. Yeah. Parole violation. It costs money. Get him back. It doesn't matter. Okay. I, I, you know, uh, it, do you... <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can't imagine the federal government or any agency that has somebody that's wanted that they know where they're at is saying, well, we don't have the money. To, I've never heard. Have you ever heard of anything well, like they, that? Well, they spent the money. I mean, to seriously, tell. Joe, have you ever heard of anything like that where the, where the government says we don't have the money? No, we know this guy is guilty. We know we can put him in jail. He violated his parole, but we don't have the money to go get him. I me. You've never heard. He's never. I've never heard of they, that. They, they've been I, I, on it. They've been on it. But as you know, law enforcement will not tell me or you the whole facts to the case or what. What they, they have, they have a file this this high. It's called the old pirate. Really? Yeah. That's the that's the um, name they gave them. The old pirate. Did you see in the article with Road and Track that I did? I'm the one who got you on it. Oh. Remember? No. <laughs> You're the one who got me in I'm all of this trouble. I'm the one you're who the got one, everybody on that. You're the no, damn troublemaker. AJ, AJ, AJ Bain wants to go to Thailand and interview him. I said, are you out of your mind? But, now, you know, but back to that. He wants to go over there and interview him. I'm like, yeah, well, how many bodyguards are you going to bring with you? But he's so egotistical. He would love the exposure. Yeah. He would love a film being made about him. Right. Even though he's the villain. Right. That's the ego part of him. Uh, I get it. He would love it. I'm I know sure it. he's on the computer and he's reading and he uh, he knows what my part. He knows what I'm doing. He no, knows I who I am. It. Yeah. He's not going to touch me. I didn't see him kill anybody. I'm not a threat to him. I, I'm exposing him. And I didn't see him, him kill anybody either. I know. Oh wow! What did he do to me? I know. Well, he uh, thought you were going to. Well, mess you up might. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm serious. Uh, you know, and I don't know how much money he has, and if he has. Uh, and I'm sure he does. I don't know. But if he has money, if he's got a lot of money, he doesn't need to come back and kill you, Lisa. He can hire somebody to do it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, you should be careful, don't you think, Joe? Well, okay. I mean, because she's, she's obsessed with putting him in jail. 
the money issue is something that I question a lot and that I wonder about often because his history is blowing away money like it's water. I mean, this guy went through a lot of money in a very short period of time. So if he had anything left over from his smuggling enterprise, he's either hid it very well or it's in Switzerland, fairly well. U.S. Marshals have his millions in a Swiss bank account. He made millions on Wall Street. That's what a lot of people, a lot of that money is clean money. That's not drug money. He took his money and invested it correctly. He's a he's a numbers guy. He he he's a mathematics whiz. He took his son out on on the sailboat for like two three months. Junior, every single day he had to give him give him math classes, and he wanted him to be as smart as he was with math and numbers. And so he invested his money. He's got money offshore everywhere. He had money in the Bahamas, down the Caymans. Uh, um, over in Europe, I'm sure he went to England because he had money in, in the banks in England, and he still has money in a Swiss bank account. He was busted going up to his going, bank account yeah, in Geneva. I knew he got caught in Switzerland. Yeah, and with, served with a short hope. Time and... With hope and the baby. People don't know this. With the baby, they had a tail on her. They went there. Guess who was working with Interpol? Swiss hookers. Inside information. It's the facts. He was messing around with Swiss hookers, and they were working with Interpol, and that's how they nailed him going well, to the bank that day. So well, he I, likes he likes throwaway people. He likes people who have like Chalice with this you know dysfunctional back family background, people that don't have a lot of ties, don't have people that are on top of it, their lives. And here you know you had Pauline Wood coming, and of course she had sons, and he went and he conned them into believing he was a good guy. And went to meet him to say goodbye in Ohio. That's very psychotic of him. And he had a master plan. He was just going to use her. He needed her money to get offshore to go to the other banks to get his his money. That was the whole purpose of using the ATM machines. And he was using Fort, uh, Fort Lauderdale hookers to go to the ATM machine. They have a case file that's pretty solid in Fort Lauderdale. But I'm not law enforcement. They're not going to talk to anybody, even retired law enforcement is not involved in the case. And every time I've called to try to give them even fresh tips or anything I get, they don't even call me back. So it's been pushed aside and put in the back. She's a 22-year-old cold case and Chalice is 42. They've got other crime that they're solving right now that's happening right now. It's not, it's not important I, to them. I, I find all of that extremely, like Joe, it's true. Joe has a difficult time. Accepted that I'm, for many. Now I'm not doubting you. Uh, I'm doubting the law enforcement. I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand why they have, especially a high-profile person like him, that they went stupid over when he shot me, and then he murdered or supposedly murdered several people. And and Fort Lauderdale's got evidence of him uh, with the Colleen Wood thing. They're not going to go after him for forty thousand dollars. I can't believe that. That that's that's bullshit. There's there's some there's some underlying something in there that they're not sharing with you. I'm not saying you're doing that, but the bottom line is is I, I for forty thousand that, that's chump change to the law enforcement. I agree. I agree. But guess what? What I have found out from a family member of Colleen Woods recently. He took Colleen to Germany to meet the other son who was in the service over there. He was military police with his wife. His wife was sharp and knew something was off with him and just said, well, what's your real name? And he says, John Paul. But Colleen, I think, knew more than they reflected her to know in, in media releases that were done on her. Um, she went to a racetrack, so she knew he was a race car driver. There was a lot of things that, you know, I, I'm questioning that she knew everything about his past because the son was leading us to believe that she knew nothing, and he just found out about her by doing a Google search after she didn't answer her phone calls and everything. So he took her to, to Germany under a false uh, passport because he was on parole, right? Because he met her when he got out in 1999. And uh, you can't go on a, any kind of base because you're going to check you out with a fine tooth comb, right? So he's like, no, no, we'll have dinner off base. So that was a red flag for her, too. 
And, you know, Pauline was just like, yeah, he's my boyfriend. Be quiet, be quiet, you know, like leave him alone sort of thing. But she she felt there was something off on him. You know, I mean, the red you, flags were there. and they Have didn't you ever spoke to him? Have you ever met him? Yes, I met him with Chalice. We went so, out to dinner and went to his house. I met his, his lawyer. I mean, did you spend any it. time with him or just dinner? No, and just that night. Okay, well, you don't have to spend a lot of time with him to realize there's something ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't care who you are. He, he's a creepy-ass son of a bitch. And uh, mm-hmm. he's controlling, manipulating, all of that. All of the above. And for anybody to spend any amount of time with him would go, what the hell? I need to get the hell out of here. Here you well, go. Joe, we did an interview. He was saying how he, he picked up on Chalice being scared of him back then. Didn't want to go on a boat. You, you spoke to him? No, no, I've never met him. No, let's talk about Chalice. Chalice and his impression from Chalice being scared of him back then. Because she, you know, she was separated when I met her in Palm Beach. So it wasn't until we went and I rendezvous and met her from New York and in Atlanta to go see uh, the, the screening of Excalibur. Of Mike Metaboy, she knew who directed it, he was the CEO of Orion Pictures. And that's when she organized a dinner out in his favorite uh, French restaurant in Sandy Springs. And then we, he took us back to the house because he, I he guess he, French food. He, had, he had a meeting with his, his lawyer, but he was discussing doing a quaalude deal with his lawyer. I was floored. I was like, who's that? Oh, that's just his lawyer. What? You know, how many lawyers you know doing drug deals? A few. Yeah, so tell I'm Joe sure. about him. He was washing all the money for all the smugglers here. Well, he, but he was all Allegedly. He was, he was right in the middle of it. I mean, before we would go down, we would have a meeting with him, and he'd tell us what to do if something happened, and da 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 he knew exactly what was going on and shit, you know, but... Uh, that was uh, the 70s? Yeah, I, you know, the last Late time 70s. I did something illegal was in 1976. I haven't, you know, I, you know, honestly, you know, that's why they came after me is because I quit. They kept doing it, and uh, and I had the most to lose, and that's how law enforcement works, right? Yeah. And so they, they came after me and tried to put the pressure on me to testify against... David. So you friend. hadn't done a, a, a smuggling operation since 1976, but you got shot in 83. Thank you. No, 80. 83. Was no. it 83? April 19, 1983. Really? Okay. I, I yeah, know. right. I exactly. I mean, and I went to prison in, in like 80 or 81 or something. Seven years after you got out of the business. But right. You went on the run. You, you, you took off and traveled. Ran for a country. year. You then know, you went spent to prison. 14 months in New Orleans, yeah. holding cell, right? Saw daylight twice, yeah. 24 hours of right. neon lights. I mean, this, this place was... Uh, that amazes me. Seven years later, what kind of risk could you have been seven years after you got out of the business? I was uh, Well, it, 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 it wasn't a risk. They, they were out for information. <laughs> they want, uh, they what, wanted information. That's what they yeah. were. You they don't understand. Were, they, they never were, caught him with drugs. Right. David and those guys were continuing to do it. They wanted them. They didn't want me. They didn't come after me for me. They came after me for David. Okay, and and what I knew, what I how I could put him in jail because he was still doing it. I quit, you know. And then when I was shot, and I scribbled John Paul's name on that piece of paper, you know, uh, they they freaked out. They had no idea I even knew John Paul. You know, so the the bottom line is is uh, they they weren't after me; they were actually after John Paul and David. Gotcha. I had no idea the connections John Paul had in St. Augustine. I really didn't, uh, and he he knew a lot of people there, and undoubtedly was doing selling and doing things there that I had no idea. I thought I was the only pusher man in St. Augustine. <laughs> to be honest with you. And uh, so, uh, uh, I don't know. So, anyways, we're going to head out. I, didn't, I, I never saw him with a girl. He was just... He had a lot of women...
Sure. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'll just show you a few things. You, you can't. I, I have pictures. <laughs> That's my leg. That's a pull of my leg. And this is kind of interesting too, back here. I took that picture. In 1973, the Venezuelan army in the back of my sailboat, commandeering my sailboat, fixing to take me to jail in the back of that army truck right there. And that's me getting out of jail. <laughs> you can't make that shit up. If we take the back roads, um, I know the quickest way to get to Madison. Oh, cool. Yeah. The only, my only concern is, is Madison got hit pretty hard by the hurricane. And I don't know what kind of... Roads are open? Yeah, the roads are all open, but I don't know what kind of damage we're going to find right. inside the, the town itself. Right, okay. This is the big town of Madison. This is Madison now? This is Madison. Oh, there we are. We have to have a downtown, right? Yeah, we're headed to it. So this is downtown. This is downtown. You're, you're there. That's the courthouse there on your left. I like the disabled boat. Hold on. All right. We looked off to the right, shouldn't have. I'll be okay. Everybody cool? Yep. <laughs> it's a nice old building over there. There's some really beautiful old homes in this area. So this is like Main Street? Yeah. That's Main Street down there? I think so. Let me turn around and go down there and get some footage. I think if you blink, you've gone through the town, right? You're in biology. small towns, the downtown area is dying out. It's dying out? Yeah. Well, that was it. <laughs> yeah. There's a scarecrow back there. That was actually a person sitting outside. What a shame. So that's Madison. That's it. Boom. Out of here. Wow. What a chalice. Hong Kong too. Jacksonville, the big city of Jacksonville. Came from there to Atlanta. So this is her stomping ground for sure. Where's the lake? And there is there has to be a lake for that name, right? 
Cherry Lake General Store. Actually, it's pretty nice property, huh? Very nice. Well kept. I am sure it didn't look this way when Chalice was raised here. Um, they have flowers and pots back there, and they got nice landscaping. Yeah, very well. Landscape. Country road, yeah. Very well. Nice country home. You know. Um, there's been a lot of trees down because the hurricane that came through here but uh it's very nice so it was quite a drive to get here and um that's joe joe arby met chalice in Key West. He's taking the puppy for a walk. Oh, they're on bikes. And we're in training. Even puppy knows. You feel the spirit? Do you feel the spirit? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Feel chalice here? That girl loves champagne. If I had a bottle of champagne, I'd pop it open right now. Can you imagine if she stayed here? She's still be alive. Left is the light. So you you and I talked before, and you used to tell me that you used to um, you guys used to go to the lake all the time together, and you'd meet her outside her house. Yeah. Did how come she never invited you in? I don't know. It was kind of strange. But she'd say I'll meet you down there at the beach, and sure enough, she would. So she, the, how far away was the beach from Madison? Oh, not that far. I don't know, 10 miles or something like that, up, up to Cherry Lake. So do you, when you call Cherry Lake, you call that the beach? Like Yeah. So when you say beach, you're going to Cherry Lake. And uh -huh. uh, what you guys do at the lake? Oh, uh, we went swimming, and and she liked to dance, so we'd turn on that portable radio, and she would dance, and, you know, we'd flirt with the boys and do that kind of stuff, you know, young girls would do. Right. She was beautiful, and she was a wonderful dancer. 
Oh, it looks like a pretty big lake. Yes, it's bigger than... I've never driven by it. I've only seen it from the air. So, we went through Madison downtown. There's nothing there. We did our interviews. Mission accomplished. I'm going to say a prayer for Chalice. Yeah.